Hello and welcome to Mo Shang USA channel. Mo Shang came from an ancient Chinese poem, which means down to earth. We are a Chinese and English bilingual China. Today, our good friend Mr. Tom Hafer is going to use his alma mater MIT as an example to show you how woke is American higher education. Good morning, Mr. Hafer. And Dr. Liu, I hope you are well. So today, we're going to do a lighthearted look at a serious subject. We're going to look at how woke is MIT. And we'll start with a small musical introduction, and then we'll move on to explaining what was in that short musical introduction. <laughs> Now that we've seen the video, what is wokeism? Well, it's framed as a benign awakening to the fact of prior discrimination, particularly against black people. If that were all it was, it would be fine. Unfortunately, beneath that facade lie several fundamentally malevolent and counterproductive tenets. Substitution of equity for equality, the cancellation of any person or idea that does not adhere to the woke narrative, a theology that holds that all of society, and indeed even science and mathematics, are fundamentally racist. It must be torn down and remade in some new anti-racist mode. So let's look at each of these. What is equity? Equity is one of those cleverly selected words that's designed to sound like equality. But in fact, it means almost the opposite. Here is the definition from the MIT Mechanical Engineering website. The goal of equity is to ensure fair treatment. It differs from the principle of equality in that equality affords everyone the same treatment, while the principle of equity acknowledges existing inequalities and adjusts and tailors resources to afford everyone equal opportunity. We measure equity based on outcome rather than intent. If a policy program, activity building, or other physical structure contributes to inequities, then it is unjust and must be modified to ensure all members of the community can thrive. So the question is, would you drive on a bridge designed by someone who failed his mechanical engineering test but passed with a modified, enhanced grade? Or would you prefer that your brain surgeon was licensed based on her individual merit or on her membership in some disadvantaged group. So you can see equity and equality are essentially opposite meanings in this context. And MIT has gone with equity. So what is cancellation? Well, here are some examples. The disinvitation to lecture on climate change by University of Chicago professor Dorian Abbott because he had co-authored an article opining that merit, fairness, and equality were superior criteria for determining college admissions than diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is what MIT is now all about. Similarly, the firing of Father Daniel Maloney, who sent to the university's Catholic community a letter about his understanding of the circumstances of the death of George Floyd, but it was a very balanced, reasonable, and entirely factual letter, and yet the deans at MIT were so incensed that they fired him the very next day. Even scarier, 77% of MIT professors answering yes to this poll question, are you worried given the current atmosphere in society, that your voice or your colleagues' voices are increasingly in jeopardy. 
Now, if 10% of your professors answer yes to that question, you've got a problem. If 77, that's almost four out of five, answer that, you have an emergency. And yet, everyone just sputters along as though nothing is happening. And here's a student comment. Whether in class or in the dorms, if you voice disagreement with the agreed upon liberal narrative, you will be ostracized socially and targeted for being someone who uses hate speech. That's what they use against you. Anything they disagree with is hate speech or racist. And so you are smeared as an individual. And now, can you believe that they are claiming that math and science are racist? Here is the new chancellor of MIT, Melissa Nobles, the number two person in the organization, who recently co-authored an article titled, Science Must Overcome Its Racist Legacy. And here's a quote. The enterprise of science has been and remains complicit in systemic racism, and it must strive harder to correct those injustices and amplify marginalized voices. Now, Ms. Nobles was previously the dean of the MIT School of Humanities, called CHAS. So what did she do while she was in CHAS? Well, she hired Sally Haslinger, who is now the Ford Professor of Philosophy in the CHAS Department of Linguistics and Philosophy. And a quote from her is this. It is not that reason is inherently objectionable, but allowing ourselves to be preoccupied with the significance of reason reflects a bias towards men or the masculine, which feminism ought to challenge. But the core idea is that a rational stance is itself a stance of oppression or domination, and accepted ideals of reason both reflect and reinforce power relations which advantage white privileged men. So the question I would ask is, do you agree that reason must be challenged because it is the province of men and that irrationality is what we should be doing now? And second, can you think of anything that is more fundamentally insulting to women? than saying that reason is the province of men. Lastly, on the DEI organization, it's taken over. MIT hired six DEI deans in one single day. Those are their actual pictures up there. I thought they must be trying to form a DEI hockey team. But upon further investigation, it turns out that there are over 70 DEI staff overall within MIT. So hockey's out. Uh, they have enough for a complete NFL roster. So the question for the incoming president, there's a uh, old president is leaving, a new president will be selected. We don't know who that will be is how will MIT unchain itself from this plague of wokists? That's it for today, and we can discuss whatever you would like. Wow, it doesn't sound MIT. It is more like some modern culture training camp. So why didn't people wake up earlier? The overall situation has its roots decades earlier. MIT has, and, and most universities, have generally hired liberal staff during the last 50 years. Uh, the ratio of liberal to conservative professors overall at U.S. universities is about nine to one. But it only became virulent within the last few years. It, it burst out in the aftermath of the Trump election and the George Floyd incident, and, and, and now it has become not just front and center, but entrenched. Uh, you have a hard time digging out 70 staff who are dedicated to advancing DEI. 
And the problem with that is that any time that you get an overstaffed bureaucracy that doesn't have enough to do, they soon create new missions and go branch out in even crazier directions than what they originally started in. Appreciate. Thank you. Good to talk to you. See you next time.